Hello, my name is Michael Salmony and I'd like to welcome you to another episode where we look at interesting things and people and thoughts on fintech. And today I am joined by Fanny, who is CEO and Secretary General of FinTechture. And uh, welcome, Fanny. Uh, very nice to see you. And maybe you could tell us a little bit about your journey, whether the uh, everything works really smoothly for you and you could just initiate payments and get the data or whether it wasn't quite as smooth as that. Well, it's not ever easy to initiate a payment. It can be sometimes, but it's not always easy uh, because uh, API are not all working so well and we don't have all the functionality we sometimes need inside the API uh, to deliver uh, the best service. Uh, so, so API is nice, we initiate payments, but uh, because it, we consider it was not enough, FinTechTure decided to have payment uh, institution license to complete uh, to complete the payment uh, initiation uh, services. So when API works and when we consider we have a good quality from this API, we are using PIS and uh, we are using initiation of payment. And when we think the quality of the API provided by the bank is not enough, is not sufficient, that's sometimes the sad statues uh, which tell us where the money is are not clear or are wrong, we are using the, uh, the license we have as payment institution, which means instead of forwarding the money, asking the bank to forward money from one bank account to another bank account, we will welcome the money in, in a FinTech Geo bank account so we know where the money is and then we will uh, forward it again to the to the client. Wow, I mean, that is surely not what the regulator originally intended, right? They wanted these nimble, small, innovative fintechs to come in, which had hardly any licensing requirements. You just had to get a PIS license and not become a payment institution, not hold the funds yourself. So that's, uh, that's really dire that, this, uh, that you had to go down that route. Do you think this will get better now? Because we have another video with Eric Ducolombier who assured us that uh, the APIs will be enforced in future. So you won't, won't need your payment institution license in future. Are you optimistic about that? Uh, we fully trust Eric de Coulombier when he said he will try to improve the situation and we are uh, really thankful to the commission for the work uh, the institution is doing. We think with the PSD3 and the PSR, the situation should improve. But what we can see is that there is a lack of enforcement, of uh, a lack of implementation of this regulation by the NCA. Um, for example, in France, we are um, sending the information to our regulator. We are uh, sending notification to the regulator to say that some API are not working as they should be. And um, we don't see a lot of impact about uh, this information we give to our regulator. So we are wow. always optimistic, but we are also pragmatic. And we can mm. see that sometimes uh, uh, what, when the API do not work, the NCA are not so active. And what I would like to add also is that sometimes we miss API. We still have some important bank, one at least in France, which do not provide us with an API. Uh, so when we don't have API, you cannot initiate payments. Um, so with the PSD3 and PSR, we hope this bank will provide an API because the commission is really supportive of the API and we are too. But now we can see that sometimes we do not have API. So that's why we are using our payment institution license when we do not have API. And I would like to add that we do not want to perform a payment with um, authentify direct access. So it's a choice. We just want to use API or, or to use another license, but we not, do not want to do it with uh, direct access. I mean, that is an extraordinary story that, I mean, I don't know, when did PSD2 come out, 2008 or something, that we still have banks that don't offer APIs that are, that are working. And I understand also that uh, some of the APIs, although they are compliant, they, they are missing things. For example, the name of the payee, I think that was, that's a pain point you have. Could you explain what that's about? Yeah, we 
we, we are missing the name of the PE. It's quite important. We are performing KYC in all our clients. I want to be clear about that. So uh, we are performing a KYC and we know where the money is supposed to go because we, we, we perform the KYC and we know where we want to, to, to transfer the money. But it's also nice to project the information we have. So we would we, we like the API to give us the confirmation of where the money is supposed to go. It's an information the bank have, and some bank do not want to give us this, this information. Uh, they, they are speaking about GDPR reason, or also they are, want to save money, and it costs money to send the information. But the fact is that to fight against the fraud, the best way to fight the, against the fraud is to score check the information you have and the information the bank have through an API, which is a neutral tool and a connection between two regulated entities. And we still mm. sometimes do, uh, do not have this information from the bank. Is, is, is that because you want to try doing the confirmation of payee yourself, essentially? Is, is that what it's about? It's many. First, it's because we want to fight against the fraud. So, and then it, we can speak about the confirmation of pay, but it's not the main reason because we know quite well the IT of the bank. So we are normally able to know uh, if uh, we can confirm the fund or not. So it's not, I know some bank will say that, but it's not uh, for the confirmation of pay that we can mm -hmm. do. We would prefer not to use uh, the tool. we use algorithm and we use many intelligent artificial to 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 to, to give this confirmation API. we would like the bank to give it to us but it's not the main reason the main reason is really to fight against the fraud because you can always have someone uh, when you have a connection between us between the bank you can always have someone trying to uh, to arrive in the middle of the transaction also to have someone with social engineering will take his phone and put some pressure to the client or to his user. So uh, the main reason is really to fight against the fraud. It's not for the confirmation mm -hmm. of the That makes sense because that's a fraud model that's totally rising. I and mean, we've seen that in the UK, that uh, this social manipulation and forging of the, 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 the PE. So uh, you really should get that data because it helps protect us all. Yes. Yeah. No. Since I have the opportunity of having you as a French uh, payment uh, uh, expert here. Can you help me with one thing a lot of people are a bit confused about? Why there are two standards in France? There's Berlin Group and there's STET. Can you help me with that? Can I say that French like to be French we mean different <laughs> from the other people? They are quite proud about that. <laughs> so maybe it's one of the first reasons. Uh, the other reason is that French people like to have their own standard or their own tool and things like that. So uh, the cultural reason is one of the reasons. Uh, it needs to be taken in account. Uh, but not only why do we have two standards, it, it's because we are, as a fintech, we are quite happy with the state standard um, because we were really involved in the work of the state, which were quite neutral, IT and neutral, and uh, we, which didn't. Um, give reason to the bank or to the fintech and just said, uh, I will provide the standard and then the bank will decide to to uh, implement it or not. Uh, so uh, the state standard provide more information to us than the Berlin Group standard. So we are really supportive of the Berlin Group standard too. And we are using the state standard in France and the Berlin Group standard abroad. But uh, to be fairly honest, uh, the, we have more information with the state standards than uh, with the Berlin Group standard. Wow. So the state standard is better in a number of ways, right? More data and uh, better. But of course, the Berlin Group is the one that's been successful in Europe and even beyond, right? So, so you think both are going to remain at least in France, right? Uh, yes, because at least uh, I think banks do not want to change them, and fintech are French fintech at least. But I think uh, uh, yeah, uh, French fintech are quite happy with it. So I think it will not change. Uh, also, maybe it was easier to have uh, uh, all this information because this standard was just built for one country. The Berlin Group wanted to be European, so maybe it's more difficult and complex to build the European standard. And sometimes you cannot take all the information you have because it, uh, it it's, uh, has not really uh, 
uh, sense for all the European countries. So I do not judge anything. And uh, I think everybody knows that I'm both supporting of the Berlin Group and of the state standard. But once again, to be fully honest, uh, uh, we have more information when again with, once again with the, Ber with the state standards than we have with the Berlin Group. Uh, so we would like to, to keep them. And yeah, and if the Berlin Group wants to take some of the information we have to implement it in the Berlin Group standard, maybe we could move forward. But at this stage, uh, it's not the case. So we are quite happy with the state standard. Okay, wonderful. That's really helpful because a lot of people are wondering whether there isn't a bit of extra cost, you know, having two different standards and complexity in the Berlin Group's done such an amazing job also moving to open finance and many other things. But uh, what you say makes a lot of sense. So thank you, Fanny. You've been super interesting, super helpful. We covered several points indeed in this short episode and uh, all of which I think will be enlightening to many people. So thank you very much for your time, Fanny. Thank you very much, Michael. And thank you to everybody who's watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you will enjoy the other ones. I uh, look forward to seeing you in another channel.